Bear and Cheryl Show. Book edition. So, we actually are doing Bear's Book Corner. So, as we know, I do have a new jingle for Bear's Book Corner. Or rather, Bear does. So, we thought on this kind of gray day, although it's starting to sun a little bit, um, we would do my absolute favorite book. One of my absolute favorite books from one of my absolute favorite authors when I was younger. C.W. Anderson. Clarence William Anderson. And I have most of his books now. Thank you, Amazon. So, because he was um, a writer in kind of the 40s and 50s, I think. Maybe the 60s, too. And I, I read his stuff when I was little in like the 80s, mostly 70s, 80s and a uh, teenager as well. So it was amazing. So without further ado, Bear's Book Corner. Okay, Bear, you ready? No, nope. well, I can sing it too, but yeah. Well, people are waiting. People are waiting. Okay, good. He's going to sing it. He's just, he's a singing, dancing bear. But you know, sometimes it's, he's chosen uh, to live this life with me now, so it's beautiful. Although we're still hoping to be YouTube celebrities, you know. So, it's going to happen. <laughs> okay, let's do it, Bear. Bear's Book Corner, Bear's Book Corner, Bear's Book Corner right now. Boom, boom, boom. Bear's Book Corner, Bear's Book Corner, Bear's Book Corner right now. Boom, boom, boom. So, everyone... Welcome to Bear's Book Corner. So, the book we are doing today, you can see it, it's called Salute. And it is literally one of the best books I have ever read in my life. And it has helped me so much. And as we somewhat know, if you've been with my channel at all for a while, pretty brutal uh, upbringing. So, it was such a different life than the life I had. And briefly, the story is about this little boy who lives on a farm. He's got lovely parents, don't get me wrong, but it's like the 40s, I believe, um, the 50s. And uh, so there was all kinds of wilderness and all kinds of horses and all kinds of space that there isn't now. And he wanted his own horse so badly, although he did ride the um, draft horses a little bit. But if you've ever tried to ride a draft horse, you can imagine um because of course back then people used horses much more than they do now and it's this glorious story about how he gets his own horse through a certain way i won't go into it too much and then he um he does end up getting another horse which is called salute and there's a reason why it's called salute but i'm not giving it away it's a bit of a longer book so we may have to actually take a couple of times Anyway, this is what it looks like right there, C.W. Anderson, um, and it's a beautiful book. I got it from the library way, way back when, and it was amazing. There really aren't that many pictures, but I can give you some. Not that Clarence William was not a gifted um, illustrator, too, but just this is more of a chapter book, so he only has a few, whereas his Billy and Blaze stories has a lot of them. So, Bear and I um, are going to read this. This is, What do you think, Bear? This I don't know if this is Bear's favorite, but it's my favorite. But he's happy that it's my favorite. Nah. So, okay. From the time Peter first played in his crib, he showed a liking for horses. The paint on the toy horse that he always kept with him was worn. In many places, the wood showed through, but it was still his favorite. New toys were tossed aside and forgotten after a short time, but he always had to take the little wooden horse with him to bed. It was the same when he grew old enough to walk. A rocking horse was watered and cared for while other horses and other toys gathered dust in the corner. His ABC book looked almost new until you came to H is for horse. This page was worn and dog-eared. Unless his mother watched him carefully, he would go toddling down to the barn where he knew the workhorses were. As he grew up, his love for horses grew also. Almost everyone in this countryside liked horses, for Peter lived on a farm near Saratoga, where each summer the finest thoroughbreds in the country raced. But Peter's liking was different. 
It was more intense and absorbing, as if it was the one important thing in the world for him. On a farm, everyone must work, even the youngest, and when Peter was eight, he had certain chores to do. But often when he was sent out for a basket of kindling, he would find they would find himself down at the stable, panning and talking to the horses. When his mother found him there, she did not scold him. She knew that this was something he could not help. She only suggested to his father that the feeding and watering of the horses be given over to Peter. Nothing could have pleased him more. He soon found that by climbing up on a stall, he could get on the horses' backs, so he rode proudly to the water trough at the pasture gate. His small legs spread an amazing angle by their broad backs. It wasn't like the rides he oh so often took in his dreams, flying over the country on fiery horses with flying manes and tails, but sometimes Ned or Brownie broke into a heavy-footed trot, and that seemed very exciting. Before long, Peter was cleaning and brushing the horses, standing on a box to reach the backs and the necks. Chores that had to do with horses never seemed like work at all to Peter. That's it. Oh, you want to get a good, he wants to get a good look. When Peter was 10, he was taught to milk the cows. But his mind was always on the horses he'd been reading about. His hero, Man of War. This will come into play later. So remember the name, Man of War as though you could forget it. Or old exterminator, who looked so plain and was so great. His father, coming around to see how he was getting along, would find half the milk going on the ground as Peter sat daydreaming on his milk stool. From then on, his chores were mostly with horses. He never forgot anything there, and no effort was too great to make for them. Their harness was cleaned and all the buckles polished. Their coats were always clean and glossy. All the burrs and straws were cleaned out of their tails, which were brushed until they were silky as those of circus horses. His charges seemed to enjoy all this attention and be soothed by Peter's voice, for they always rubbed their big heads gently against him while he worked. And this is the one picture that is in the book. So, oh, like I said, it's such a wonderful book. I got so much out of this book when I was younger, and still do. Some people have a way with horses, and a horse can always tell this. They can sense it at once. He will do more for them than anyone else. The neighbors often shouted at their horses. Do you like that? No, I don't like that either when people shout at me. The neighbors often did that, and they could be heard from several fields away. Peter spoke to Ned and Brownie as if they were talking. he was talking to a person and they obeyed him perfectly. During the haying season, he was always the one that drove them in the fields, and his father said no one else could make them pull so well. When Peter had finished his lessons after supper, the most exciting part of his day began. When he went up to the narrow stairs to his own room under the attic eaves, he was in a new world. The walls were covered with pictures of horses cut out of magazines and newspapers. All the neighbors knew of Peter's love for horses, and they always saved magazines and books about them for him. On the wall opposite his bed, where he could always see it when he awoke, was a large picture of Man of War, with his proud head held high. Grouped around it were smaller pictures of his famous sons, American Flag, Crusader, Battleship, and one of War Admiral. He had found it in yesterday's paper. The line beneath it read, Son of Great Man of War, who will run at Saratoga Saturday. That was tomorrow. Peter hadn't said anything to his father. He had just hinted a little to his mother. But he kept hoping against hope that he would at last see a race and see the son of his great hero. Propping himself up against the pillow, he began to read in the daily paper about the big race. Much of it he could not understand and he kept trying to imagine what a race course must might look like. But then he read, many people consider War Admiral the best horse that has run for the Saratoga Cup since his great sire Manowar won in 1920. A little shiver ran down his spine. He must see this race, right? Maybe if he got up extra early tomorrow and did all the chores and helped with all the other work, his father might take him to the race. At last, Peter fell asleep. 
dreaming of a world he had never seen, but which was more real than that one about him.